Hey, what's up, everybody? So, um, haven't posted a video in a while. Just about it. kind of been working on the the VIC circuitry um, coils and just all sorts of stuff. But I did want to give you a little bit of an update and show you kind of what I've been messing with and what the plan is right now. So a lot of you are probably still wondering what in the heck is going on with the EPG. Well, last live show, I went ahead and wired all these up. And what I basically did is wired up half of these in series and half of them in parallel. All right, now stand was actually actually hooked up in parallel on those bus bars. Um, I wanted to see what would happen if we try both um, because obviously you're going to see more voltage potential if you hook them up in series. You're going to see more amperage potential if you hook them up in parallel. So just for fun, <clears throat> the live show members decided uh, I gave them a chance to guess what the ohms was on this. So I'm going to go ahead and show you. About 86.6 .6 ohms. That's all of these coils in series. Now, in parallel, and there isn't an equal number here. There, there's a couple more on the one side than the other. In parallel, we're looking at about 0.6 ohm, all right, which is actually more towards the value whenever you would see like a uh, a motor, um, like an AC motor. You would actually your readings would be almost a dead short, and you know that's what I'm seeing. So it it it, it wouldn't surprise me if all of these connected in um, uh, parallel is actually going to be the right way to go because you're going to get a lot of current. Because um, if you think about a uh, three-phase motor, you got like 480 volts going into almost a dead short. But since you're oscillating, you know you're getting out that you're putting in that uh, oscillating voltage. But anyway, just some thoughts ahead in my head. I thought I'd share with you. Um, but yeah, so there's the measurements of that. Um, the next thing is I've actually still been working on the gas processor and the well the gas processor this is uh, the regular hydrogen gas gun this is what I'm calling the gas processor it's a little different um, basically this is my test chamber and if you guys seen this before I had these standoffs just like this on a uh, uh, stainless steel rod Alright, and then those two connectors back here are electrical connectors. They're actually hose designed for like an air fitting, but I had them around, so I went ahead and used them as electrical connections. And so there's my electrical connection inlet, and I had my anode and cathode I'll be using for my uh, um, iron, nickel, or cobalt um, ions to try to attach to the argon. That's what I used, and I thought these were copper. These are just copper plated, and you can see how they look. They used to be really nice, bright, and shiny, and after some high, intense arcage and some ionization and a whole bunch of other stuff, they've actually started rusting and pitted. So, they're steel. Um, I don't want any steel in my chamber. Brass would be fine, stainless is fine, but I don't want any iron of any sort. I want to try to make sure I'm only dispersing the metals that I want to. So basically I'll be running my argon through here and uh, applying my high voltage potential and that's another issue. I want to use a DC potential to do this so I'm, go I'm still got some stuff to work out. Um, the DC power supply that I have for this I'm using for this. I don't have another one for this. Um, Blaine said he had another one. Maybe he'll ship it to me and I'll be able to do two of them. But um, there you go. So that's the chamber. And I still have a little bit of work to do, uh, a rework to do. You guys have seen this. Who has been following my work, you've seen this in the past. Um, and uh, me trying to ionize some stuff. So that's kind of a little update. Um, I don't have the circuitry here with me right now. So I can't really show you the VIC circuitry I've been working on. But it's all posted over at the forums. There's some pictures over there. 
Um, other than that, that's really all I kind of have for you, and um, I just wanted to give you an update. Oh, one more thing. Those of you who um, joined the live show, greatly appreciated. It's very cool to um, have people who would like to see me work live and ask questions. You guys can actually type and chat to me, and then I can uh, respond. Um, but I'll go over a few things real quick with the live show stuff. First of all, the first thing that all you need to do who want to know anything about my work right here. Um, we originally started this mailing list for the live show updates to, to let you know when I'm live and when things are happening. So if you go to rwgresearch.com, all right, you can just go right on over and click subscribe to our mailing list and our email address. Um, all information is not given away. It's only used to give you mails. Mailing mailers. Uh, the other thing is, if you guys do want to see my live show, if you go to my website and you click on the Justin TV, all right, and I'll scroll down here. Usually, there's a there's a timer running right here, and that's usually when my live show will begin. But you can click on this link right here, and also the the chat box right here. Um, Anytime we have a chat, it's always logged, and every show is logged. Um, I'm still working on the software to be able to upload the videos um, directly and in high def. Still working on that one, but right this moment, if you click on this link, it opens up a new window. All right, and everything is in this window. So right here, you'll see my video from Justin TV. When it's when I'm live, I'm live there. The other thing is, is the uh, chat, alright, it's a uh, IRC chat, and there's the channel, if you have another way of doing this, you can jump on the channel that way, but uh, this is an easy way to see my video and the chat. I don't use the Justin TV chat anymore, um, that's kind of a backup if this one goes down or vice versa, because I actually had issues one time, and Zero saved me, he let us uh, use his chat, and so now we have an IRC chat thanks to the individuals who have been working on this um, greatly appreciated all of the effort and it's just amazing to have people willing to help and offer their time and expertise in what I'm trying to do is just broadcast to the world and give everyone the same knowledge so that we can all continue so other than that um, for those of you who watched my live show you know I just finished that steak for the second day now it's good stuff so there is the PG, and there's your update. I just wanted to let you know what was going on with that. Um, I've been doing a lot of different work with just all sorts of stuff. It's been uh, uh, just not a whole lot to show you guys, and I've been doing a little piddly stuff, but nothing really amazing. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do right now is actually hook up my DC power supply to the gas processor, or the hydrogen gas gun, I should say. These two are going to get confusing. I should rename one or the other. But anyway, um, I should actually be able to ionize the argon and create uh, photon energy if we're extracting electrons. And that will totally, probably melt this entire unit. So I might try to hook it up just to see if we can get the argon to ionize, see what it looks like. And um, then once I get this chamber done, we'll run some gas, mix it, run it into the EPG, and test it out. Um, I want to put a plug on the end of here so I can easily attach the um, pulser pulse fire box. I want to be able to easily attach this thing so I'm gonna make a plug. Um, I even may make a plug here on the side so I can just plug it in and uh, I may not but I might. I might do something like that. Probably won't put a plug on the pulse fire just on this end. And then I'll make up a pigtail long enough that I can just wire it up when I'm ready to do my tests and ready to go because um, I'm thinking about using that uh, mechanical pump in place of the uh, regular coils here. Um, I do have to go back and go through the information I told you guys I was going to go through um, about the EPG. Um, I keep calling this the primary but really it's not it's not really a primary it's a uh, polarization device and it actually keeps the um, it, it's a, it acts as a prime mover so it's a pump and then the other thing it does is it actually aligns the molecules or the uh, the the gases inside this 
the magnetized, the permanently magnetized gas, it, al it keeps it aligned. So this isn't really necessarily a, pri a primary because all it's doing is moving the gas and keeping it aligned. Uh, it's not like uh, primary, secondary. It's it's a little different. It's a little it's a it's a magnetic device. And so if you're spinning the magnet the magnets, okay, inside this tube, then you're going to call this the prime mover, which is a pump. It's an electromechanical pump in this case. And this is just your pickup coils, just like an alternator. So that's the theory of this device is a is a magnetic device, not anything spectacular, crazy, or insane like some people would think. So, all right, enough enough jibber jabber. I just want to give you an update. I want to say thank you for your support. About knocking my drill off the table, and uh, yeah, uh, the things I'll be doing this week. I got to install that on my roof, and this came out of an old server tower that I took apart. A couple of fans. I think I'm going to use that as a as a vent in my in my ceiling here and uh, put it somewhere right up in there try to get the air moving through this outside lab it's a it's gonna get hot it was cold now it's gonna get hot just no comfortable right now it's comfortable I'm liking it alright peace and love to you all have a good day leave a comment um, please check out open-source-energy.org and also rwgresearch.com You'll find all the information you need to know about this particular device and anything else I've ever worked on. See you guys. Have a good day. Thanks.